What's going on, y'all? You're back and you're listening to Occupy the Media. I'm your host, Paco. I want to thank you if you was listening the last hour and thank my guest, Harold. You guys make sure you get in contact with him if you can. And we are going to put that interview up on YouTube. I apologize. I know there were some issues, but I record <clears throat> my interviews. I try to remember to record my interviews every segment on my own computer. So I'll be putting that up on YouTube as soon as possible so you guys can hear that. And also, yesterday... We had a record breaking on my show, over 100 downloads of the interview we had yesterday with uh, uh, Zaria Fish and her sister. I apologize, I don't have her name in front of me. But uh, yeah, you guys check that out also on my YouTube page, Paco757. Okay, so we have Jake Peters coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a call. We're going to talk about this Oklahoma convention. And if you're in the chat, don't forget, we have a chat room here on Ron Paul Radio. You click Listen Live, the chat room in there. Right now, we got over 30 people there. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to get to them. And since you guys are listening, please let me know if you're having audio problems because I, I, will, I will stop the interview and try to make sure we can address it if it's something I can fix. We want to make sure you hear as much as possible, and I do apologize for the issue last hour. So let's go ahead and get call Jay Peters here. Okay, her name was Quadosia Fish. I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right. That was on the interview yesterday. Hello. What's going on, Jake? Hey, not much, Paco. How are you? I'm doing okay. So we, so we got you on air. I appreciate you being on. And now that we got our listeners listening, I just want to say on behalf of all Ron Paul supporters, man, you made us so proud this weekend, man. I just want to say hats off to you, and we, we, we appreciate it so much that you took that leadership role and uh, represented Ron Paul so well. Well, I appreciate that, and uh, I was just happy to be a part of it, to tell you that. No doubt. So, uh, to get straight to it, there's one question I know that's been on my mind, and some people are asking about it. I know we got all the delegates based off the convention you, ha- uh, the convention you had. So what's the reality of us of this going through, of us having all of our delegates there in, in uh, Tampa from Oklahoma? Well, I mean, it's, it's something that has to be determined. However, uh, I'm pretty sure there will be you know, uh, an issue that, Maybe possibly the credentials committee would have to decide from the RNC. So, um, you know, it will be challenged what what occurred that day, uh, along with what we accomplished in the parking lot. Okay, okay. So we were talking with uh, the sisters yesterday about what went down. She pretty much hit up all the points. So I want to get to basically where you came into play, and uh, and I I understand it as you jumped on the microphone and you announced that you're having a convention going on outside. Take me, take us from there. And, and four. Actually, uh, that was Brady Wright. So okay, I'm sorry. Credit for that, but yeah, going forward, um, you know, a, a large delegation did convene in the parking lot, or was moved in, into the parking lot. Uh, you know, with the realization that the adjournment was forced through uh, against the rules and against calls for uh, appeals to the chair, and uh, division couldn't be accomplished with a third of the of the convention hall closed off to sight from the chair. So, uh, upon you know moving that convention to the parking lot. Uh, nominations were taken from the floor for a new chairman, uh, noticing that the that chair position has been vacated, and uh, I was nominated and, and elected, so I was happy to serve in that role. Okay, so now, so you take the the, the chairman role, role. Now, I understand, in order for you guys to take this convention and for it to be, quote-unquote, by the rules and legal, you had to have a, a quorum. Is that is that correct? Um, well, that's, that's, that's the real contentious part there, because... Uh, you know, no quorum was ever officially called for. And, uh, you know, had any of the uh, people that opposed us went outside and called a quorum, that would have been an issue, I would think. However, that that never did occur. So, you know, upon reconvening, uh, you know, what was the big question to, in our mind was the credentials report as amended. Uh, it never did go to a vote um, after over a couple hundred people, it appeared to me, were added to the credentials. So we called into question the, uh, you know, validity of any of the credentials that had been already passed and so the very first thing that we did was uh we we took an account of everybody that was in attendance and uh and then we decided that as a group i think it was uh, uh, a motion made to reconsider the credentials and uh, we reconsidered the credentials took a new credentials count and 
established a new quorum based on that. Okay, so you would say, though, that everything that you guys did outside was by the rules, by pretty much by the book? In my opinion, it was. Um, however, there are, like I said, there's some, there's some murky parts there. Of, like you said, a quorum, but uh, you know, noticing that one was never called for and the new delegation uh, questioning the credentials report as amended, uh, voted to reconsider. You know, and as a continuation of the convention, I think that was well within our rights to do that. Also, I'd like to point out the state party rules you know, do call uh, for a quorum to be two-thirds of the original quorum established. I, I believe the original quorum is just over a 1,000. I'm not positive on that number, though. Um, you know, more review needs to be made of the actual convention that occurred. But like I said, it almost becomes a moot point because no individual questioned the quorum at the time. And then we decided to vote. You know, we needed a two-thirds vote to uh, reconsider the previous credentials. And that, that occurred, and we recredentialed based on that reconsideration call. Uh, thereby establishing a quorum based on the number we had convened in the parking lot. Okay, okay. And so pretty much, you guys, from my understanding, is you pretty much ran through the whole convention again outside in the parking lot, and that's why it took uh, took so long all, what, into the night, right? Yes, that's correct, because of the repeated disregard to the rules. And when I said, you know, there was a repeated disregard on almost every issue. Rules were broken. Uh, credentials weren't amended correctly. They kept being amended uh just out of the will of the vice chair person of the party, Pam Pollard. And like I said, hundreds of delegates were added after a uh, official cutoff time of 9 a.m. for credentials. And uh, at that point, you know, like I said, that called that, that into question. And on the rules, you know, a minority report was offered by the duly, you know, recognized 20% or more of the rules committee that had been appointed prior to the convention. And that was ignored um, and not, not put to a vote in accordance with Robert's rules. And, that, and then there was a, a very good question on whether or not the rules had passed um, once they did more motion to pass the, uh, the regular rules committee rules. But because they didn't take a vote on the minority rules, they were out of order in that regard. And uh, so, you know, everything that they did was in question. Uh, going to the next item, the election of delegates and alternate delegates to the National Convention was not uh, done by a roll call vote. And Rule 18D of the state Republic Party rules specifically say that election of delegates at large and alternates at large shall be by roll call vote. And what that is there for is so that it gets calculated based on the apportionment. Because, uh, you know, you, if you understand this process at all, you'll, you'll know that there's open delegations and then there's delegations that have assigned delegates and assigned alternates. When a county has, for instance, 50 votes, if they're a delegate slash alternate delegation, they have their 50 delegates named. And only those delegates can appear on the floor or, in their absence, an alternate from the alternate pool of delegates. Well, um, that gives them, you know, their 50 votes as long as they have enough people there to claim their 50 votes. Uh, in an open delegation, you, your vote can be fractionalized as a delegate or weighted, should I say, or apportioned. And the way that works is, you know, if you have 50 votes authorized and you only have 25 people show up, everybody can have up to two votes. So... You know, if only 10 people showed up, you could get 20 votes still out of that 50 votes that's authorized to you. But in the other, on the other side, you can't have that. You have to be, a body has to be there. That's correct. Uh, well, in an open delegation, each delegate can represent up to two delegate votes. And so when you have delegations that show up with only half their membership, they get two delegates each. So a simple headcount won't suffice, you know, for the election of delegates or alternates because every delegate has a varied, you know, delegate vote. And, for instance, if you have 50, pe 50 authorized votes, you have 100 people show up. Each delegate there in that delegation only gets a half a vote. So it's very important in, in elections to go by the roll call vote, which is then also calculated according to the apportionment and how many votes each of those delegates is authorized by party rules. And they weren't going by that? No, they did not. They did a voice vote on the election of the, the executive committee slate of delegates and alternates. And that was challenged at the time, challenged later, and uh, you know that it, it didn't stand. They would not do it. Would not take it by a portion of both. Okay, I so. want to talk about those challenges when we get back. We're about to head to a break. I hear the music coming in, so just hold on the line for me, and we'll be back after the break. This is Paco, your host. You're listening to Occupy the Media. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Dana, and I started out as a Ron Paul fan just like you. 